Oh, I see the, okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Alaska Tracy's podcast. Here you can enjoy inspirational stories, business, and marketing tips and tools for you to use. Enjoy this week's episode. Hello, everybody. It's Alaska Tracy here, episode 39. And thank you Whoa. so much for joining in today. We are live, uh, and I'm doing this via my um, Facebook, YouTube, and my podcast. So, wherever you're joining in from today, thank you so much. I have two wonderful guests that I just met live right now. <laughs> Uh, but I met LaDonna on her Instagram feed, and I was very intrigued. And um, I'm here with LaDonna and Oli Gunderson, and I'll let them introduce themselves to you here in a minute. I'm just going to read a little bit off of LaDonna's bio from her website. Um, she's an Alaska Fisher woman, cookbook author, and lover of salmon. And that was what hooked me. Uh, and she lives in Ketchikan. Um, so welcome to you both. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for having us. Yeah. They are joining in from where they can get reception, right? In your car. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> in your car at a boat harbor. Yeah, right. That's it. Uh -huh. We're looking at the cell tower right up there. Yeah. That's <laughs> in Ketchikan. Yeah. Right. Awesome. So I have just known LaDonna just from looking at your Instagram feed, and I thought, what a great person to do an interview with about inspiration. And we talked a little before I hit the record, and you two have been married for 33 years. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 34? 34, 33, 33. 33 or 34 this year. And you do everything together everything yep. yeah we do it yeah. wasn't always that way you know way back when in our early years marriage i was fishing i i fished for 10 months a year and of course left her behind a lot of the time and, yeah and so we spent a long time away like the first year we were married in fact i spent eight months on a tugboat never like we come to town for 24 hours or 12 hours and be gone for 30 days back for 12 hours gone for 30 days so so we spent a good fair time away from each other too. but about 15 years ago we decided that we wanted to spend every waking moment together <laughs> <laughs> kind oh. of a joke of ours and oh. uh, and so we started fishing together full time and have been together ever since yeah. yeah oh my gosh what's the secret sauce laughter laughter definitely laughter yep we have a lot of fun together yeah we, we're always like rearranging what works what doesn't work what went well what didn't go well and the things that don't go well we leave those behind and we just add to what works well and we keep moving forward in that area so before the cookbook did you start a business together well commercial fishing okay a commercial fishing business together we started that um our second year of marriage yeah yeah, our second year of marriage, we bought a commercial fishing business together. So we mm -hmm. wanted to merge our talents and fish together. But um, yeah, just like I was going to say about, you know, the, there's like a whole story to this about how the cookbooks came about. I don't well, know if you're ready for that or not. Yeah, but, yes, um, yes. Okay, so, so we, we bought our first commercial fishing business together. And that first summer, it happened to be the worst weather in like the history of commercial fishing. To date, it was the worst weather. What year was that? 1988. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so, and so I was continuously um, seasick all the time. Just always seasick. Yeah. It was rough. Every time we'd go out, it was just, just terrible weather. So, of course, well, I started you. beginning to wonder what the heck I got myself into because I was born and raised in Southern California. I wasn't <laughs> used to being on a commercial fishing boat, let alone make your living on it. I was used to, you know, um, swimming at Huntington Beach and Long Beach and swimming in the ocean, having fun in the ocean, <laughs> not making my living on the ocean. So, um, of course, we were 
um, starting to think that maybe I couldn't um, be on the water because I was so seasick, like every time we went out. So on a trip into Ketchikan at one of our local restaurants, we were having lunch and a friend of mine asked me if I was allergic to monosodium glutamate, MSG. Uh -huh. yeah. And I said, MS, monosodium, I couldn't even say it. I had no idea what she was talking about. So she uh, gave me a list of, um, of the hidden sources, autolyzed yeast extract, sodium cassinate, hydrolyzed vegetable protein, and of course, monosodium glutamate or MSG. She gave me that list and she said, okay, take that to the grocery store and don't buy anything that's on that list. Well, it just so happened to be, I was buying everything that was on that list. Oh my gosh. She also said, go back, when you go back on, out on the water, um, you know, look at your food that, that you're eating. And if there's anything on the list, throw it out. Don't throw it overboard, of course, but throw it out. <laughs> so, um, what I quickly realized is that everything that we were eating had some form of MSG in it. Wow. Yeah. And so it was a huge eye opener at about 23 years old. We were about 23 or 24 years old. It was a huge eye opener in the fact that I quit. I realized that I was not only poisoning myself, but I was poisoning my husband through the food that we were eating because I was choosing the food that we were eating, right? I mean, right, right. and so, uh, you know, once you realize that, I think we, we kept eating it, I think. For a little while. For a little while, because, you know, it takes a while for you to actually believe that it's true. Um, <sighs> one thing that I was drinking twice a day were those, uh, those international hot coffees. You know, the, remember those old hot, hot coffee drinks, the flavored coffee drinks? like the um, coffee creamers that you put yes, in your yes, coffee, yeah, yeah, the yeah. flavored ones like vanilla or, yeah. you know, like that. I was drinking that like twice a day, sometimes three times a day. Yeah, knowing that it had all those ingredients, bad ones in there. Wow. I just couldn't believe it, but I was still sick. And so once I grabbed a hold of the fact that this is something that we just have got to not, not finish eating up everything on the boat, but just don't eat what's on the boat. I looked at him, I was in tears, and I said, what are we going to do? What, are we, what will we eat? And you said, what did you say? You <laughs> Just go back to basics, fish, rice. Uh, go back to plain food. Just basic, basic, basic. Basic, you know, fish, because we were catching lots of fish. We, back then, we were, um, we'd start our season off halibut fishing, then we were salmon fishing, then we did shrimp and crab. We did, um, we had divers for sea cucumbers and gooey ducks and Holy uh, went out herring fishing. I mean, we, we have all this access to fresh seafood, but yet choosing to eat packaged and processed foods. Oh, loaded with MSG. Yeah. So once we started eating plain and healthy, the side effect of that was I was no longer seasick. Oh my gosh. And we were happy and had a lot of energy. Lots wow. of energy, so loads of energy. So we were more efficient. Uh, as commercial fishermen, because we felt better, we had more mental clarity and energy. And okay, so then fast forward, got a little tired of eating plain. <laughs> yeah. yeah, his mom, my uh, Oli's mother, owned a restaurant here in Ketchikan called Kay's Kitchen. Um, okay. She owned uh, the restaurant for 28 years. Right. So Oli grew up in the restaurant business and was well aware of what food was supposed to taste like. <laughs> <laughs> not rice and beans huh <laughs> no no gourmet food and desserts and all those yummy flavors and then every time we would come to town and we would have dinner with his mother and father we always had a beautiful dinner that was ended with dessert homemade desserts and everything was made from scratch oh yeah, oh. yeah everything Her, his mother never cooked out of a package uh -huh. <laughs> So she began to teach me, you know, this is how the flavors, this is what it should taste like. Look how easy it is to do this. And his mother had so much patience to be able to teach me, you know, what good food tastes like. So I would go back to the boat. Well, I'd go to the grocery store and get ingredients, go back to the boat. And I just slowly, because of all the time that's available on a fishing boat, slowly going through, you know, what I think recipes should be like. I started with salmon first, um, 
and then I, um, I, you know, I had like, I don't know, 75, a hundred different ways of preparing salmon. Oh my gosh. How many of them were salmon every single day, sometimes two, three, four times a day. We were eating, I mean, people, people have asked me, they, I, you know, when my salmon cookbook, Salmon Desserts and Friends came out, people had asked me with eating salmon that much, you must have high mercury levels. <laughs> We oh. never, I never heard that until we went back to the East Coast. We went back, back to New York for a book signing, and and uh, I was like, what? And I kept hearing it over and over, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. And I, I didn't know why they were saying that, because, you know, salmon swim shallow. They're short-lived fish. Why would they have mercury? Didn't make any sense to us. Yeah. So, of course, we flipped a coin to see who was going to go take that mercury test, <laughs> the blood test. I lost. And uh, I went and had the blood test. And they said, uh, okay, on a, on a scale of one to 10, and uh, Oli's getting hot, <laughs> on, a, on a scale of one to 10, if you have, what is it, like up to a 10? Yeah, it's like 10 is a trace. 10 is a trace of mercury or heavy metals down to zero, one zero is what? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. I had less than zero. Wow. If we eat the same things, he probably would have less than zero too. Well, right. he right. had less than zero. So that, I don't know what that's about, but I'm only imagining it's probably has to do with farm salmon. That's another subject. But that's another <laughs> story for another podcast. <laughs> oh so my. That's how the cookbooks came about is that you know, all the time available on the fishing boat and it being able to experiment with different recipes healthy recipes because I again I don't want to kill us right <laughs> I don't want high fat recipes we want healthy clean from scratch recipes and I just developed all these all through 30 years of cooking on fish on the fishing boat and so that's where the recipes came from oh my god so which, how many cookbooks do you have out I should know that. I have I have a total of six I have five in print Wow. And something you might not know, Oli is the photographer. I was going to ask you some of these. So I'm looking at um, LaDonna's Instagram feed right now. And it's All of LaDonna, it's Oli. LaDonna Rose Cooks is her Instagram. And these photos are beautiful. It's from Oli. There's a few shares on there. They're not 100. Those some of them are like some of the whales are shared and things like this, but for the most part, they're, yeah. They're beautiful. And the food looks just amazing. How easy is it for somebody that's not a cook to cook, to, to they, make the recipes? They can, everyone can make the recipes as long as they follow my recipe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had people tell me, oh, LaDonna, this and this didn't turn out. And I'm like, what? How could it not turn out? Did you follow the recipe? Well, no. I <laughs> added with cayenne. Oh, maybe oh, too much cayenne. Yeah, I'm like, it didn't cayenne. call for cayenne. <laughs> <laughs> that was a classic. I, yeah. I always tell people, make the recipes as, the, as they're written, and then make your adjustments <laughs> after that. But don't blame me if they don't work out. <laughs> <laughs> the pizza looks amazing. Yeah, That's thank you. Good. Wow. We met... We met in a pizza parlor in Paulsbo, Washington. Oh, wow. Yeah. He, uh, so you tell. I was going to, I would fish in the summer, you know, as a deckhand up here. And then uh, I would go down to the Seattle area and, and I would go to photography school in the winters. And uh, that's, you know, way back then. And then, you know, we, we met and we came, you know, brought her back up here, moved here full time and uh, went fishing. And I didn't pick up a camera for like 20 years not i totally put it aside and you know and then and then they went through the digital you know from film you know i learned taking film and then i went to digital and i was like oh digital that's i don't even want to learn it. i don't i don't you know it's beyond me whatever and now the cookbooks come along and uh and the first book that she mentioned the one that's out of print now is just there was just six black and white photos in it it and, kind of uh, looked like a church fundraiser you know, book. Spiral bound, you know. But it did really well. Yeah, because it's kind of really homey. well. It's real homey, nice book. But uh, <laughs> so we she we had this idea of putting the salmon book together, and and I I thought, well, 
I can take a picture of food, you know? And so, so we just took it out on our back porch and shot the first picture. And she's like, holy. <laughs> oh, you can do that. <laughs> They're yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So I write the recipes and Oli takes the photos. And yeah. So, so what, what year was the first cookbook produced? We were talking about that today. Um, it was about 13 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And we talked about that just today. How long did it take you to get the first one published? Do you have a um, publisher? Well, it didn't take very long. No, self published. It okay. didn't take very long. I wrote the recipes in the summer and then we put everything together in the winter and then by spring we had the books. Um, it was kind of an interesting thing. I I I ordered about five hundred books because I had no idea, you know, I didn't know. Sold those 500 in about a week. <laughs> just right here in Ketchikan. Yeah, the support of this community has just been absolutely mind blowing. Yeah. They, this, yeah, yeah. I don't know what we would do without the support of Ketchikan for wow. sure. So you guys love Ketchikan. Oh, we do. This is our home. Oh, and you yeah. spent time in Maui. Oh yeah, that's where we fall in love again. Yes, we go to Maui too. We, we love Maui. We, do you know, then you know what that's like. Yes, yes. Yeah. it's very renewing for us because our relationship is so much a, of a work relationship. We, we work mm -hmm. together, we build our business together. Everything we do is about building our businesses, right? right. And when we go to Maui, we're able to just let it all go and we just play. We, we exercise the whole time we're there and we just go to different restaurants you know there's so many there there's so we, many and we play yeah yeah so tell me about the struggles along the way oh struggles <laughs> 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 the struggles with struggles with fishing or the struggles with life cookbooks how about the struggles with maybe working together having a business the, well together? um the the struggles as far as like when when i first started fishing with oli i had absolutely no idea what this life was about but yet he had the dream of that this life would be a beautiful life and you know, here I was seasick. I didn't like the solitude. He doesn't talk very much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wanted to be, I, you know, I'm not embarrassed to say I wanted to be entertained a little bit more than I was being entertained. Mm -hmm. um, I just needed a, like back in the beginning, open my eyes up and see the beautiful scenery that Alaska has to offer. And then once that started to happen, then I embraced the lifestyle and that's when things really started popping for us. Yeah. But it was hard because, you know, you can get on a commercial fishing boat and argue for seven days straight. <laughs> Nobody oh. hears you. Or 14. Or a month. <laughs> Nobody can even hear you or even care less how you're getting along. You know, you can just do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, but then what happened is I, as I realized is that if I was mad at Oli and I refused to feed him because, <laughs> you know, that's what we do, right? I'm not going to do that for you. <laughs> right? Then he would get hungry and he would be grumpy and then we really didn't get along and then he just didn't even care. Huh? And then he would eat like candy bars and then he knows that made me mad so we had to get rid of those, you know, right? And stuff. So I think once we realized that it didn't make any sense to fight, right yeah there's certain you know there's everybody's got personal strengths you know yeah you know, you know it was what we do now you know it's a long it's a long ways to get here well say 10 years ago we kind of came to the to it that i fish i catch fish i know how to run the boat i take care of the engine fishing gear i focus on fishing and she focus on everything else which everything really makes else. it nice it goes like paying the, the cooking bills, the cleaning, cleaning the cooking cleaning paying taking care of all the financial stuff you know through the summer when we leave Ketchikan we like last year we stayed out of town for 120 120 days, days and we loved it on the boat didn't come um, to town we did not even come back to town for 120 days holy and we loved it 
loved you it. Know, it's a small boat. It's kind of like living together in your bathroom. Yeah, it's only nine feet of inside <laughs> space, and it's a 32-foot boat by 14. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah, I mean, and we that. love it. We get along so well. We have a little cat that goes with us named <gasps> Peta. And she's our she's our little third pea in the pod. <laughs> but I, I think that the big kind of a, I think that's kind of I'm going to re revisit that for a second. It's like we have skills. Each of us have skills, and we don't like to overlap them because she's really awesome at just about everything. <laughs> I'm good at just a few things. No, that's not true. <laughs> no, but you know, just we play to play to our strengths, and we let each other do what we each do well. And yeah. Stay out of the way. Yeah. Oh. I think that's important for everybody. So moving fat like forward to where you are today, what do you do when you hit a bump? What do you both do? Do you have people that you reach out to that you can talk to about? Do you have somebody outside? No, we do. It we, depends on the bump. Um, if we're alone on the boat and we have a bump, like okay, let me think now. Okay, so last year. We were fishing in that one area. I don't want to tell where, because we're not allowed. Don't tell where, no. <laughs> top secret. Yes, I know. How, we have a boat. I know how that is. A hydraulic hose. Oh, yeah. And then the tender was right there. Yeah, well, we've been really And fortunate. tell her that story, because then, because if, if the tender hadn't have been there, yeah. then we would have went out front and blew that hose and would have lost like really three bad. days of fishing. So yeah. tell her that story. Oh, it's just kind of, um, I don't know if it's where you were going, but we. Uh, yeah, well, it is a bump. We, we were fishing in this area and it was really slow fishing and we decided to change areas. The next day it was going to open in a different area. And the weather was supposed to be bad. And the weather was going to be a big storm and it was going to be marginal even if we could fish. <sighs> and I, um, I pulled the net in and there was a whole bunch of jellyfish in the net. I don't like to have the net with jellyfish on it. So I decided to reset the net just to set it, just to pick it up to clean the jellyfish out of it and sticks and whatever was in it. So as I was setting it out, it backlashed, which is kind of a, it, it hung up on itself and started tearing a big hole in it. Well, I slammed the brake on and it blew a hydraulic hose, which is really bad. It basically puts us dead in the water. So we had to pull the rest of the net in by hand. Big, heavy net with fish in it. Oh! Yanking on it. Now, oh. the last time that, that we did that, when we, last time, like six years ago or something last time we blew the hydraulic hose the best we could figure is we had about 800 salmon in our net and we oh. blew it about two 200 salmon in so we still had 600 salmon to get out of the net and so we were pulling the net as hard as we could to pull these balls of fish over without our hydraulics to do it oh and I, bulged, I bulged a disc in my back. I, said, I was just gonna say my back. I still deal with it today. And oh. uh and so fortunately for the time that Oli's talking about and this other time there was always there was somebody right there that could help us. So <sighs> so tell like the so time the we were talking about I, I thought, oh no, I figured out where the hole where the what blew. We got the net in and then uh I get on the radio to our fishing, our tender that picks a fish up every day from us. And I said, hey, I'm dead in the water. And he goes, oh, well, I'm right here. And I look up and like, literally he was. It was like, thank God, you know. Away. And he, of all the tenders around, he's one of the only ones that can make hydraulic hoses. So we unloaded our fish. We had the hose, bing, bang, didn't miss a beat. And then the next day we went out and it was really rough and if it would have happened out there it would have been a totally different story. we would have lost we might have lost three days or so there's even you know like days a, of fishing it was like a disaster fantasy where literally it could have lost the boat i mean how yeah. when you say really rough what kind of seas are you talking <laughs> um, well these days not these, so bad yeah, yeah. Our, <laughs> Our tolerance level for waves has gone down about like that. Oh, like, mine's just, just my, not huge, like six, no. six, eight foot. Yeah, six you know. or eight feet. Ugh. We can't really fish in anything more than that because of the hydraulics. We don't want to blow a hydraulic hose. Yeah. We're very well aware that if that happens and there's no one around, then we're going to be in big trouble. And, and really, the and, fishing usually isn't all that good when it's really rough anyway. But I wanted to go back to when we were pulling in all those fish without the hydraulic hose and I had hurt my back. 
there was a boat that had just was he was just going by and he pulled over and says hey you guys look like you need some help and we said yeah and he said what do you want me to do and all he said go on the other side of our net and start picking so the guy picked up to the back of our stern huh we said keep all the fish we don't care <laughs> you know, right and he says oh i didn't even do this good all day you know and everything and he hosed our deck off for us and uh and then you fixed it uh, you fixed, fixed it. it good enough to get to town you know that's the thing about fishermen is they can fix just about anything <laughs> yeah, yeah. no yeah. seriously they can yeah. jerry rig stuff they can fix just about anything and i have that confidence to know that yeah yeah, yeah. oh there's been you know on a, on a fishing boat it's like things happen and or even on any boat really i mean even a yacht or anybody if you know sometimes you have to fix it you don't have a choice you must get it fixed <laughs> otherwise you're in trouble i mean yeah you know it's, yeah yeah it's got to be done so i learned how to do a lot with with wire and duct tape <laughs> so so your back was blown out yeah did you just it. get well, back as fast as you could and well, get you wouldn't believe this if i told you so i i did that to my back and then i got i think i started getting better right it took a Long time. Well, it took about well, yeah, but it took like not the next year, but the year after. You say about two and a half, three years. When I fell in the engine room. Yeah, right when she was really you getting were, better. Right when I was really getting better, <laughs> we were fishing for about forty-four days. Yeah, we fished for forty-four days straight without a day off, and we were both pretty rummy, tired. You know, when you get sleep de deprived, it's, oh. it's a game changer. Yeah. It's a huge game changer. That changes that's everybody. <laughs> so anyway, that's another story. But uh, so we decided to take one Saturday off and, and we have a little skiff that we have tied up to a little dock out at the fishing grounds. And so we got in the skiff, we went to the beach, we had a nice afternoon, it was sunny. And on the way back, Oli says, hey, it was so nice. How about if we sit on the back deck, we have little chairs and he says, let's have a beer. I said, oh, we we have beer? And he, yeah, down in the engine room, I have a case of beer. I go, that's right, because if you get in trouble, you, that's what you give people. You give them alcohol. <laughs> as repayment. You keep a, right. Yeah, you keep a yeah. bottle of whiskey on board or a case of beer as repayment. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, okay, so I heard him say that. I was standing at my little kitchen galley sink, and Oli comes in from the deck. As he's lifting up the floorboards, the floor he says he's lifting it up and i wasn't listening i was off in la la land when i turned around to say what what'd you say i fell six feet down in the engine room on my back <laughs> oh my gosh yeah yeah and, uh, ah, I and you'd already off. you'd already blown the disc yeah i redid it i redid it yeah re-bulged it i i uh I was trying to hang on, so I pulled a whole bunch of my hair out. All, all he says, I could have made a doll with my hair that I pulled out, oh ripped God. it right out of the side of my head. I, I about broke my shoulder. Um, I rebolted my disc and I tore my um, MC, MCL. MCL. I tore my MCL in my right knee that I still have trouble with. Um, so uh, anyway, I asked him, how about that beer? <laughs> <laughs> And I went out on deck and he took a whole bunch of ice from the hold and he packed ice all over me. We couldn't get a plane out there and we were eight hours from Ketchikan where we fished. It was right at dark. It was right, right, at, at right at dark and we couldn't get a plane. Eight and I was hours. Swelling. You wouldn't believe how bruised I was. I was bruised from my hand all the way down my arm, all the way down the side because I, I crammed myself in this little hole and uh, couldn't move my leg or anything. Huh. Yeah. So the next morning we called the plane. It's 30 minutes from town here from a, for, a plane. Yeah. for a plane, 30 minutes in, 30 minutes out, went to the emergency room. I ended up getting a neck brace, a shoulder brace, a back brace, and a full leg cast. <laughs> and looked at Ollie and said, well, we live up two flights of stairs here in Ketchikan. Our place is up. And back then we had a clutch, a, tr a truck. And we had, had a clutch had a for the shift. truck, stick shift. Oh. And I was writing my third cookbook, the, my tiny Alaskan oven. I was right about in the middle of, of finishing it. So Ollie said, well, you may as well just go back out with me. 
and you could just, you know, sit at the galley table and finish writing your book. Well, oh I said, well, I'm going to be probably like on pain medication, <laughs> which I was. <laughs> and, uh, I did. I finished writing the book, but it was just hilarious when I went out on deck. I just hobble out there. Like, yeah. That's like, when we realized that Oli doesn't know how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a friend. She spoiled me for all those years. I was like, he what? made me. I, and I, you know, we went to the store, and again, I said, well, we'll go get like the Amy's mac and cheese that doesn't have the bad stuff in it. Yeah. And then we'll eat fish and go, we'll go back to basics again, right? Because he couldn't cook. Fish. Well, yeah, he could cook fish and broccoli. <laughs> so I have, so I, so he said, "What do you want to eat?" And I said, "Let's have that Amy's mac and cheese." Okay, I don't know what happened, but he forgot the package stuff that went on at the cheese, and he gives me a bowl of noodles. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, anyway, we yeah, that's when we started teaching Oli how to cook. Mm -hmm. See, his mom all the cooking i did all the cooking you didn't know how to, have to know how to cook right wow of a barbecue though i should say that oh my gosh what a story have you guys ever thought of writing your own book mm -hmm. about... yeah. relationship we thought of a relationship book uh-huh we did think of like relationship recipes a relationship book of some kind huh yeah, that would yeah. Be good. But that's when, you know when i when i injured myself for the second time and we were already going over to maui for like a week or two at a time and 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 that so when i fell in the engine room and that fall when we got off the boat we quickly realized that we needed to go over there for a lot longer and we went over there for three months wow we found healers, we found mm -hmm. acupuncture, we found massage people, we found good clean food, didn't we? And by sense. the time we left, I was completely fixed up. Wow. It's yeah. such a magical it place, Mom. It, is. it really is. Yeah. It really you know, is. I feel incredibly grateful for, for all of that over there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what I would have done if I wouldn't have had the sunshine and just being oh. able to stop and heal. Otherwise, I might not have been able to go back the following summer and go fishing with Oli. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. So, earlier you said that you do have somebody or you, you have support outside of your marriage that, if, that you could go to. Mm hmm We do. Like who? Well, <laughs> <we're laughs> right <laughs> We have Brad and Lida, oh, yeah, Sandy yeah. and Mary. Oh, that's true. Tasha, yeah, close friends. Yeah. yeah, we have we have close friends. Good. So we're on the fishing boat, and it is just us, and we don't have that luxury of being able to have friendships. You know, I just got <laughs> while we're on the subject. Yeah. See, I've never been able to post on social media th throughout the summer until last year, when Canada put a cell phone tower in right near our fishing grounds, and AT and T. They, as part of their package, we have Canadian, um, international Canadian, uh, data, data, data. So okay. as long as we keep fishing where we're fishing, we have like four good bars so I can post on social media. So that's when I started doing that last summer and letting people see what's happening on our fishing boat. We want to do more of it. Too. And we'd like to do good. more of it this summer. Good. Yeah. Because, oh, you guys, you've got to check out. Um, their Instagram feed, and I'll put everything in the show notes if you're listening to this on the podcast. Um, I loved the other day, and I don't know if there's sound on it, when you posted, let's see if there's sound on this one. Oh, there's not, the whale. Oh, yeah. In the harbor? Yeah. yeah. How often does that happen? That was... I know, right? Uh. How often do yeah. they come in that close? Not too often. Holy. Once a year, usually. Maybe once in. or twice a year or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, you, one went, that one went crazy. That was like, yeah. for some reason, that post got a lot of eyes on it. You know, that, the other thing that we have on our boat, too, is um, because we don't get to watch TV. We're not TV watchers because we don't have any cable. It's <laughs> a long thing. <laughs> yeah, is we, we listen to uh, satellite radio. Oh. We have that in our boat. And so we're able, you were asking about like, you know, support and things like that or 
you know, information going into our minds, we get to listen to motivational speakers. That's what drew me to you. So we listen to like, uh, you know, uh, Wayne, Wayne Dyer, Anthony Robbins. We like Joel Osteen. We, um, yeah, we, we like to listen to, um, to those, don't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we do. And we have it on usually all day because we figure out there are, with the solitude, we don't want to put crappy information in our minds. Right. We want to feed our minds with good things like, like business, business things, things that we can grow and learn. And we have that opportunity to expand our minds, you know, when we, oh. we really enjoy that part, don't oh, yeah. we? Yeah. yeah. And we're How both- How have you been doing that? Um, well, wow. 10 years? No, at least. At least 10 years. At least, if not more. When they, yeah. when they got the satellite radio, we pretty much instantly put it on the boat. We don't have it in the car, but we do have it on our boat. So you knew you needed something outside of, you know, to keep we your do. brain. We do. Otherwise, your vocabulary goes like this. <laughs> we used to joke it goes down about eight this words. This like grunts and eight words. And yeah, oh, oh, okay. So one thing that we never do as a couple. Yes. What? Finish each other's sentences. <laughs> That is super irritating. <laughs> did that Speaking take? Of, did that take uh, a lot of work? It did. Sure. It did. Yeah, because it was super irritating. Because when your vocabulary goes down on a fishing boat, because your mind is so clean and clear, and you're just so focused on catching as much fish as possible for your living. <sighs> well, it's easy to like. I could say something, and he'd finish my sentence. He already knew what I was going to say, and I could do. Or I could just look at him and he doesn't even have to say anything and I just do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so it's important that we let each other be able to speak and give each other the attention that we both deserve. <laughs> so I needed to be more quiet and content on the boat and he need, only needed to learn, up, learn to be more um, like talk a little more. Talk a little more. Yeah. <laughs> more assertive. Yeah. 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 Do you find now when you're around other people that you do the same thing? You pause when? Uh huh. Yeah. We wonder if we're a little odd. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't think no, so. We already know we're odd. I don't think, think, so, I don't think so at all. I think you guys should. I think you out. could teach so many people so much about marriage and relationships. We and believe that. We we've thought about that a lot and what I kind of I what goes through my mind is like not everybody has opportunity to spend every minute with their partner or even most of them want to I mean just because yeah but even so we make a choice to spend time with each other yeah yeah we are, we're kind of unique in the way that we do it you know there's other like like for example on Maui we see a lot of retired people and it's like the, oh my goodness the, the woman or the man will say something he's been working for 30 years and now we're together every day and the every lady is rolling day. her eyes and i'm like it's right or this or this yeah, right yeah, they're at yeah. dinner and they're just but isn't a relationship right. right but isn't a relationship supposed to get better right better yeah. it's not supposed to go distant like you can't stand it because you're now retired and you can spend time oh my you know I don't, I don't get it. I, yeah, I <laughs> and don't call know. me weird. I don't know, but I know a lot of like, like we, like we're old enough now that we see people, they've been married for 25 years, divorced together, 17, they're just separated, you know? And then we have some friends that, you know, Randy lo loved each other to the ends of the earth. And, and he tragically passed away. Yeah. you know and and it's just like and so we that deep feeling of oh my god you know how could you how could that you appreciate every day i mean you know. have to appreciate every single day that you're on this earth yeah. every day it's a yes. gift it really is isn't yeah. it yeah. It, it is and laughter is a huge i live with a really funny man and he really i'm i can get very serious very quickly oh, yeah and um, <laughs> he often has to, <laughs> you know, until I can get there and then, uh, and then laugh at 
that's life, right? What else are you going to do? <laughs> well, so many people, I don't, so many people, there's a bunch of skips going on. So many people, they take life so seriously. And then they might look at me like, well, she doesn't take life seriously. And I'm like, yes, I do. Because I have a serious side to me. You just don't see it. Right. I'm not going to share it all over social media. No, <laughs> right, and I'm no dummy, you know. <laughs> Right, right. So define in your words, in both your words, what success means to you. For me, success means that, that at the end of the day, when I lay my head on my pillow, I know that I've done everything that I could possibly do to have a happy marriage. That's, that's the beginning right there for me. Because if my marriage is happy and we're getting along and we're on the same page, because that's important to be on the same page, then I can look in my husband's eyes and I see success, right? And also the second part of it is my relationships outside of my marriage. If they're, if they're all going great and super my, with my family, I'm getting along with my family, because I've had struggles in that area <laughs> a lot, <laughs> which, you know, I've, had, I've shed a lot of tears over it. And uh, everything's really cool now, but it took like, you hear like successful people, they say, you know, sometimes you just have to leave people behind whether you want to or not, you know, and, and, it, that, and I had to do that through the years and it was hard to do. And, um, but I guess when it really, I'm looking at him, it really comes down to it is that success is for me as relationships. And if my relationships are good, I'm feeling good about myself, then I feel successful. Knowing that I've done everything that I could possibly do to perhaps inspire other people and go out in the world and be a, a, a good person and better the world. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And Oli? Um, well, it depends on what time of the season it is. If it's fishing <laughs> season, it's all about catching fish. And if I've done, if I've done all I can do and uh, you know, get every fish out of the water I can, I feel good about that. Keep her safe. Keep everybody, you know, keep the boat good. Um, that's success at the end of every fishing day. But then off season, um, I enjoy uh, success to me is if I can better somebody through the day, like you run across people in day to day life uh, for whatever reason, they might be down or they might need it. Maybe they just need me to come along and give them a little positive word. And if I can do that, I know that I've changed somebody. I feel great. That's success, you know, for me in that day. And then, of course, having a great wife, life, you know, ultimately, I suppose that's that's where it's at. You know. That's beautiful. I mean, if, there, if there's like someone that's down and out, need, they need our help. I mean, even if it means dumping on us for a little bit, which people don't often do that, but if we're if we're close with them and they need us, it doesn't matter for how amount of, how long it takes for the amount of time. It doesn't really matter to us. If we can be there for that person and help them out of it through just being us really, just, yeah. you know, and, and being positive and just giving them, like you said, the good words, you know, right. And get them to the other side. That is super rewarding. And to us, I think to both of us, that's success. That's wonderful. I mean, money, money is successful to a lot of people. I mean, it's right up there with oxygen. <laughs> money, money buys you opportunities, maybe enrich your life. You can do more with it, give more, you know, right. But that's not really what motivates the both of us. No, no. Right. That's, what's, that's what's curious about fishing too. I've always said this. It's kind of interesting is when we're, when we're fishing and we're catching a lot of fish, we don't think of the money. We never do. They never look like dollars to us. Even though we're getting the checks every day from the tender, we're like, wow. But it's you know? not like, let's get those fish so we get that money. No. It's, let's just <laughs> get those fish because that's more interesting, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's all about the fish. It's the money is, it's important too. Don't get me wrong, but um, it's more fun to catch fish than to right. cash a check. <laughs> You know, everybody that I've interviewed, not one person has said, not one person has described success at anything to do with money. I mean, like you guys, you know, right. like, 
course, money does, right? It helps us help other people. And, right, right. But that's mostly been the guiding light is that and, and the happiness from within and inspiring others. So, you know, I, um, years ago, I worked um, when we were younger and I was working in a furniture store while he was um, crab fishing off the Oregon coast. I went with him and we rented an apartment and I would work in the furniture store while he was working offshore, crab fishing. And uh, I wanted new furniture. It was like in my mind, I knew that if I had all new furniture, then I'd be successful. <laughs> you know what happened. When they told me I could get the furniture for wholesale, you better believe I, I filled up the house, the apartment with all brand new furniture, not high end, just what we could afford at that time. But I remember sitting there on the sofa, looking around and my husband was gone fishing. He wasn't even home for a couple weeks at a time. And I looked around and I thought, you know what? This is not success. I just have a bunch of stupid furniture. My husband is gone. What's more important is to get my husband home. That's when I wrote that first cookbook. That was really, that's yeah. right. We should have mentioned that earlier on. That's when I wrote the first spiral bound cookbook. Wow. So it had to do with what we were eating, but it also had to do with the fact that Oli was um, crab fishing off the Oregon coast and he was gone. And after he got done crab fishing, he started black cod fishing and so he, you'd be gone for a couple months at a time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, this is crazy. I, I mean, crazy, because the more apart we were, the less we got along. Right. But I had the furniture, because that was success in my mind. Yeah. So when I said, no, 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 we have this all wrong. And so that's right. That's when I wrote that first cookbook. Yeah, got me off the crab boat. Yeah, I said, wow. I said oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to write this cookbook. We'll see how it goes, and, and we'll back backtrack here so when I first ordered that 500 and I sold him that first week I turned around and I ordered a thousand more I sold them in three weeks I was like I think I'm on to something and I just kept ordering more and more and more right so then oh um, you went back and you went fishing crab fishing and I says I think we can get you off that boat in one oh year oh my gosh because he was only a deckhand yeah he, he wasn't making that much money, plus the taxes we had to pay. It was taking all of it anyway. <laughs> right. I mentioned I was killing myself. And he was killing himself. <laughs> right. And so, wow, so and that yeah, first so book. It, yeah, so then that first book came out, and, um, and then I managed to um, contact Princess Cruise Line, and I got the book on there. And oh, my God. this beautiful community, we were able to get my husband home. And so in our minds, we're like, you know, don't ever, we don't ever want to forget that. We want to stay nice and humble because we haven't, because we do our salmon fishing now and we, and we're cookbooks. That's all we do. Oh, that's all. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. But we get to do it together and we yeah. made that promise that we're not going to separate. Yeah. We're going to stay together and yep. work together. Yep. What a beautiful story. Oh my gosh. And what a wonderful uh, beginning to our relationship. I'm so yes. excited. I know. So, I'm excited too. I looked at all your podcasts on the Instagram. Oh, thank They're you. I mean, you're thank right you. up my alley. <laughs> oh, thank you. So we're going to end here. Are there any last minute words that you would like to, to tell the listeners? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> My, I, my new crab cookbook will be out May 4th. May 4th. Uh-huh. Oh, here it is right here. The one that's on your Instagram. The Little uh -huh. Alaskan Crab Cookbook. It's May really 4th. Soft. It's just that big. Oh, it's cute. I that's thought it was. a little one. Yeah. Ooh, it's I like it. And what's neat is it's only nine ninety five. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. It, uh, um, we, uh. We have the three big books, but when we hit on the little books, that's when things really started to pop for us. Oh, I like that little book. The little, just little books. So I have the salmon, the halibut, the crab, and the next one I'll be writing is shrimp. So oh. When I started the little books, I wanted four little books, and then uh, hopefully I'll be able to package them into a, a set eventually, four mm -hmm. in the set. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. smart. 
That's really yeah. Yeah. so they can go to your Instagram and click on you'll have yeah. a link to buy. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. And, and also your website. Right. Yeah. Okay. LaDonna Rose is your LaDonna Rose Cooks. LaDonna La Rose dot com for your yes. website. And then LaDonna Rose Cooks, Cooks for Instagram. Yeah. And um, again, I will put that all in the show notes. Be sure to follow LaDonna and Oli for more of their adventures, their uh, cooking adventures and their ocean adventures. There's all sorts of really cool wildlife on their Instagram feed as well. So thank you so much for joining in today. Thank you. Thanks thank for having us. Thank you. And uh, everybody else, thanks for joining in to this week's episode. Stay tuned for more goodness to come.